Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Service MVP podcast. My name is Joe Cressera, America's Service Coach. And today we have a special guest, a friend of mine. Her name is Nicole Snyder, and she is with Do It Right Plumbers. Nicole, say hi to everybody. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you so much, Joe, for this opportunity to be able to come in and and talk about our business and um, how Service MVP has done so many positive things for it as well. Well, thank you so much for saying that, Nicole. Definitely. uh, uh, my heart has been warmed ever since we met you guys a few years back. Uh, definitely, it's been a, a it's a labor of love uh, for me, and also uh, I'm excited to see the growth of the company and the personal growth of the people in it, like you, Nicole. Thank you, Joe. Um, you know, I really appreciate that, and uh, I, I really appreciate all the attention to detail that you and your team gives to my team. Anytime we have any issues or we have any questions, you guys are a phone call away and provide so many things on your app as well, which has been really helpful to us. Well, tell us a little bit about Do It Right Plumbers, if you don't mind. Give us a little of bit course. about the background and the uh, what's go ahead and what's the core philosophy of Do It Right Plumbers? Obviously, the uh, you know the slogan is kind of built right into the name, which is kind of neat. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. So it tell, kind tell of a more, uh, you better, a more about that. Go ahead. You better do it right, right, with a name like that. So, um, <laughs> so we were started in 2015. Um, we started as a construction business and remodeling, um, and uh, our owner um, kind of was running into a situation where every time a job was done, it was just done, and uh, he really started to look into service and repair and realized that that was the key to the future. And that was something that was going to provide a more consistent revenue basis. So uh, segued in 2015 into plumbing Um, uh, with the philosophy of uh, we want to make sure that we have a team that is going to provide excellent service for our customers, that is going to um, have an image out in the community that we are a family company and that we can take care of our customers. Um, We're based out of Orange. So we're located in Southern California. Um, We're very lucky. We're like a stone's throw from Disneyland. Um, And uh, we have an excellent team around us of of successful people. And uh, it's it's a pleasure to work here. And uh, we just, at the end of the day, we just work really hard and we try to do right by our customers. I can see that. I definitely see that in the the way you guys do training and also the way you guys uh, go go about doing your work too. Definitely, that's the work ethic is and, get, and getting the detail, the fine attention to detail, which is also important. I think for, for me, I'm kind of a stickler for quality, as you probably know. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Nicole, what are some of the? Let's go over some of the keys that you found to uh, helping to grow. That, that you know, what what is uh, Do It Right Plumbers found as some of the key uh, to uh, making sure that you can sustain the growth of the company. You want to cover some of those things? What's the first thing you think would be a key for Uh, you? 100% is uh, our people. So making sure that when we select somebody that they're the ideal team player. Um, You know, are they hungry? Are they humble? Are they smart? Um, And within that, um, are they going to be able to take what you have taught them and be adaptable to different situations out in the field? So if they are able to display all of those things to me and they're a great team player, we bring them on. That's a huge part of our success because, you know, let's be honest, our revenue is driven by those individuals. And if we're not having the right individual driving the car, then the car is not going to get to its destination. Um, uh, other than that, customer services. Uh, well, well, hold on. Really. No, so certainly. With that being said, I just want to say in, in Southern California, I think a lot of people who are online can see there's no shortage of brash plumbers who think yeah. they know how to do everything already and uh, yes. c- come in there. So, uh, so I'm sure you must get uh, your share of applicants, a range of applicants, people who coming in who are sort of like, hey, we're just trying to figure out how to be a plumber. And then there's other people like, yeah, I've worked at about 18 million plumbing companies. I, I can mm-hmm. tell you guys how to run this business and all that part of it there. T- tell me, uh, you know, a lot of people are really hungering for like an experienced employee. Is, is the philosophy you do it right sort of a hybrid between some experience and then people have to have an open mind or tell us a little about that. What, what, how do you yeah. how do you deal with somebody who comes in and tries to say, I, I could tell you how to run this place already, you know, before I even get here. Tell us about that. Well, I can tell you that that person is probably not on our team. Um, and, uh, we, we don't necessarily, yeah, we, we don't want people that are going to come to our team that, um, are going to tell us how to do business. 
Um, we want somebody who's going to come and uh, contribute in a way that is beneficial for the team growth. So, you know, obviously, you know, we are open to suggestions from our technicians because they're on the they're on the ground floor. They're the ones that are seeing everything that's out in the field. So we are very open to anything that they want to bring to the table. Um, but it, it's about the right attitude. And uh, if that technician doesn't have the right attitude, then they're not going to be a great team player. And uh, it makes it just difficult to, to deal with on a daily basis. And then it's at that point, it's a burden and not an addition to the team. So um, there's some things, you're, some things you're willing to train on. Yeah. But, uh, but humbleness and open-mindedness, something that that's something people got to bring with them. Would you say that's Yes, fair? 100%. We've had more success with looking at technicians from an attitude perspective than a, a years of uh, service or skill perspective um, because those people are coming in, they're going to be hungry as well. So they, they bring everything else with them if they're humble. Yeah, I, I think I've seen somebody with the core philosophy, as they said, safety is first at the very top of it. And then they had, uh, you know, uh, training is going to be another part of it there. Mm -hmm. uh, third is going to be sort of communication skills between everybody. And then the final thing is the workmanship that that's the thing we'll teach the final thing, because that's something that I, it could be developed on a week to week basis. But uh, I think the most important thing is that the uh, for everybody who loses their job because they didn't know their job, there's eight people who lose their job because they couldn't communicate or be part of the team. Does that make sense? Correct. Cool? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So like, the, you know, bringing on the right person is super important. Number one, paramount portion of my day um, includes is making sure that I'm continually building my team and developing the team that I have. Uh, because also making sure that continued training going on with your staff is is super important. If, you, if you're not doing that, then you're not investing in your team. I think you were just about to enter into the second key, I thought, which was uh, yes. a customer service. Tell me customer a little bit about service. that. Go yeah. Ahead. You, so, how do you define um, that? Customer service as like a, a broad term, you know, encompasses a lot of different things. Um, but, you know, to shorten it up, it would be more of uh, are we are we showing up and are we exceeding expectations? Um, are, are the customers so happy that they want to talk about us in a positive way and use us again? Um, and the workmanship that we put into it is, is that also exceeding their expectations. If we leave and the customer has um, all three of those things satisfied, then we're looking at having continued sales from that customer um, and probably continued sales by word of mouth. Hmm. So I uh, tell us about some of the things that you have implemented that's that's unique. If I said, you know, uh, the differentiation mm -hmm. of that customer experience is a key item. So what would people say, that, you know, if they're on your team, yeah. <clears throat> what would the team try to be developing that's unique compared to what other companies or other people would do? What would you say? Well, is something not, that you... I would say some companies do this, but not every company does a, a thorough full home inspection. Um, you know, which is which is included and, and not something that um, we're, we're charging for right off the bat. And mm -hmm. that is something that has been very refreshing for our customers. Mm -hmm. um, when our technicians arrive, they are professional, they are clean, they respect the customer's home. Um, it's a lot of those things people don't see on a daily basis as well. And then, of, of course, providing options to the customer and allowing them to select and, and not being pushy with those customers and allowing them to choose their own destiny by providing them a, a range of options. So you're saying uh, diagnosing the technical issue further than the customer uh, expected, which is exceeding the expectation there. Like, yeah, we're going to take a look at everything while we're here to make sure that the entire system is working good, not just just the one problem. Oh, that's so nice. You're going to do Yeah, just part of what we do to make sure you're taken care of. And then uh, number two, uh, leave the, the uh, make sure we're cleaner than you thought we were going to be and neater yes. and cleaner and more respectful than we're going to be. And then uh, it sounds like making those choices is another part of it there. Giving more more options than people expected to get. Does that make sense? Certainly. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, we, we could go to a water heater call and then leave with a water heater infiltration done because uh, the customer didn't understand how the quality of the water is going to affect everything else in their house, including their new water heater. We want to, you know, make sure the longevity of that um, is, is spoken about so that they understand truly how to extend the life of everything that's in their home, not to mention their own lives and their own safety. How do you get the technicians, like you said, the right people as part of it? I guess that's why you get the yeah. right people, right? Yeah, that's why that's uh, because, the biggest part, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you're saying, hey, hey, guys, you want to open up the playbook here a little bit and make sure that uh, the client had an option for everything and not just the fixing the water heater, the, the faucet, but also make sure the water purification. And stuff. So how do you 
open up sometimes the the closed mind, pry open the clo closed mind of a, a te some technicians who feel like, well, I'm just here to get the job done and get out of here, rather than spending some time with the customer, making sure that we get the best solution that's right for them. How, how do you, how do you get that philosophy? Is that something? So that I think the culture the helps way, with. Tell me. The best way for me is um, is ride alongs. Um, and spending time with those technicians on an individual basis, um, because if you're not willing to, to do it yourself and come out with them, a lot of times, especially those more experienced technicians would maybe not be um, interested in what you're selling because they think like they already know how to do everything and they're what their way is the best way. Um, but uh, getting them out there, showing them how to truly care for the customer by doing so, like, you know, I'm going to spend some time with this customer and we're going to talk about everything under the sun and I'm going to learn about their aunt, I'm going to learn about their plants, but I'm also going to learn about who they are as a person and what their expectations are and what they need done in their home today so that I can help them going forward. And without doing a full home inspection, you're never going to get to all those points where you build a true relationship with that customer. Hmm. Well, obviously, serving the external customer is a focal point of Do It Right Plumbers. Tell us a little bit about the internal things that you do to keep the staff engaged and, and make them smile too, because it's like, yeah. I think we have to not only exceed our external customers and expectations. I think it's also important that we exceed the expectations of our internal people too. Uh, how do you guys achieve that kind of thing where that culture kind of grows together, where everybody feels like they're in this together as a team? Yeah. So um, the philosophy that uh, we work by every single day is that we can provide a win-win-win culture. So that mm -hmm. means first and foremost that the technician wins, um, the customer wins, and then of course that do it right as a company wins as well. Um, if we can achieve that balance through all our decisions and everything that we do every day, then we're in a great spot. Um, some of the other things that we do to make sure that our technicians are in a great spot is we um, have a very aggressive pay plan also that brings the best out of people. So if you are somebody who wants to be successful, you know, then come on down and give us a try and uh, we go from there. Um, and if that works out and if that's something that they're interested in and they are interested in being a part of our team and being a team player and they want to be, you know, a part of Do It Right, then, then that's what we do. It seems like uh, what I've seen so far from the guys I've trained who have come to our live training and even you, it seems like uh, the people at Do It Right Plumbers are uh, proud to be part of bit, something bigger than themselves. Does that make yes. sense there? Is that, uh, feel yes. that thing? how is that being fostered? How's that philosophy where the culture feels like, uh, you know, that the team is above each individual? How do, how do we, how do we, how do we achieve that? Pride, pride in everyday actions. Um, you know, being selfless as a leader is something that is big in that regard. Um, when I talk to my technicians, I make sure that they know, like at the end of every conversation, what else can I do for you to make you successful today? Hmm. Um, so it's kind of a service, kind of a service you're providing as opposed to being sort of a kindergarten teacher or yeah, like, somebody, I'm not somebody who's them around with people. a stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not playing that game here. Uh -huh. It's, it's what, what else can I do to help you? I mean, I'll drive a part out to a guy. I'll come out to a job site, talk to a customer, you know, um, whatever I need to do in order to make sure that that technician knows that I'm willing to sacrifice for you generally leads to that person wanting to sacrifice for me and for the company as a whole. That's a law of obligation in place, yes. there, right? Where you, yes, sir. <laughs> you start, start, by, start by serving somebody else first, and then uh, people naturally feel obligated to return the favor. Yeah. Right? Yes, 100%. Uh, uh, what other kind of philosophies or core? I like the win, win, win is a really great one. It reminds me of the Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That's yes, kind of like 100%. We, we draw thing. a lot of our um, inspiration from um, some of, uh, you know, some of Steve's work and uh, Patrick's uh, work. And, and we, we look at those core things that they do and say, how can we apply this to making sure that we have the right players on this team? Um, we're a family owned business. So we want all of our technicians to feel like they're a part of our family. We want all of our customers to feel like they're a part of our family. So that's a big part of what we do too, is, is we get to know these individuals, not only the customers, but we get to know our technicians and find out what makes them tick. Um, and, you know, I, I share some of my own life with them. I'm not afraid of that either. Um, so that when they come to work, they feel like they can speak to me freely. I feel like I can speak to them freely. And it really does foster a culture of where it's not like you don't want to go to work because things are so rigid. Um, you know, there's processes, of course, but there's also respect. And mm -hmm. I think respect and respecting your team is, is really important. 
Tell us, a, so, so you're actually one of the, uh, Nicole, what's your, what's your position over there exactly? Uh, I'm the service manager. Okay, so you're, you're in charge of helping to train and onboard and orient the people and also keep them guided on the right track, right? It sounds like? Yep, 100%. So, so tell us about that. Tell us about the, uh, this, this methodology. I know, I know you were in our class, in our performance yeah. coach class. Uh, tell us about how, you know, uh, how, how much personal growth you've achieved as a result of learning how to guide people on there in a way that is like a service. Because, you know, I think training is a service, coaching is a service, and accountability is a service that management provides. Tell us how, uh, you know, how you've grown personally in the years you've been there at Do It Right uh, yeah. Plumbers, and tell us what uh, you, you look at it. When you see a problem, uh, tell us how you approach that problem, if you don't mind, to help, to help some other managers out there, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, so in regards to uh, bringing on a team, so obviously the interview process needs to um, to include some questions that maybe people don't ask every interview. Um, I can give you my favorite question on every interview, so we'll start there. Uh, my favorite question is, what is has been your best day as a plumber or whatever trade you're in, and what has been your worst day? Um, I find that uh, you're going to find right away if somebody's positive or negative person. So if they respond immediately with uh, the, my worst day was and they start there, they're probably a glass is half empty kind of person. If they give me the best day first, um, then I know already, OK, psychologically, you are somebody who looks for the good versus the bad. So that's an important qualifier. It's something that I use on all of my interviews, no matter which position. Um, so we start there and then you got the right person. So then we do extensive training. Um, we do um, ideally a two week training course um, where the first week is uh, pretty intense to, to make sure like those guys can hang. And then the second week is in the field type uh, things. You get issued your uniform, um, you get teamed up with uh, one of our senior technicians and you get to go out in the field and then that senior technician will have a list of requirements in which that um, person needs to fulfill while they are with them. So that way it's not just kind of like thrown to the wolves. Um, and uh, then at the end of it, um, to have some kind of acknowledgement that that person is now receiving their keys and that they are graduated in a sense to, um, and that they are now going to be their own businessmen, basically, um, and that they have their own truck because each one of those guys in their own truck is, is really their own business, but facilitated by do it right. So it's not such like a given. It's something that is like, once you pass the testing and graduations of things, then you're awarded as a full full blown staff member over here. Yeah, you you are you are now a technician that has the right to have this truck and this equipment, uh, providing them with the equipment that um, they would need for whatever skill level that they had, and uh, making sure and following up with that they know how to use it. So those are some of the ways to get started. Once you've got your guys in the field um, and let's say you have a situation to where you run into a bump in the road and which will happen, as we all know, as service managers out there, I'm sure you're like, yes, what, what then? Um, so what what I do um, is something that I've learned actually in uh, the management course for total immersion and leadership course. Um, was I utilize the gap training and short version of that is basically there is someone who has uh, been identified to have a problem, whether that be their tardy, probably the easiest one to, um, uh, to take a look at, and then to schedule the very next day that that person is now on the log that they are coming in and it's on the, dis the uh, dashboard, but they're to come in for a gap meeting with me. Then I run through the whole thing with the, the gap uh, flow chart. Um, and uh, if they are not admitting to their issue and then uh, and then accepting the assignment within it, then at that point, sometimes you have to take a furlough, which I have had to do one so far, Joe. No more oh than one, goodness, but I've had to do furlough. one furlough. Yeah. <laughs> it was a five minutes or longer. Yeah, it was longer. <laughs> longer, a longer yeah. furlough. Hey, take a couple of days and think about yeah. what to do it right is for you. Yeah, right? exactly. So, you know, but yeah. Uh, Fortunately, at this point, that technician is still on the right track. So that's great. That's uh, great. Well, I, I think sometimes we, I think the thing you said about being an optimist to imagine that yeah. people will get the message and come out the right end. That, that's important because I think a lot of people operate in a fear, a dark place, that if I try to correct people on something as simple as being late, they're just going to uh, think I'm full of it away in a way mm -hmm. and not uh, not respond to that. But I think if you take a little extra time and you've addressed it in the way you did, uh, of course, that's not the employee you're talking about, but, you know, whatever the gap for the furlough is provided, the furlough means a little time out to think about what if we if you're committed to what we're trying to do here. Right. Um, and I think we can imagine 
I think if you said, if you can imagine the negative outcome, you probably never have that talk, right? How yeah. important is it that the leader is an optimist? Yeah, uh, 100%. And like each one of my guys, whether I'm having a gap meeting with them or not, knows that I personally do care about them and their success. So coming into that meeting, because I, I'm a servant leader. So if you back up being a servant leader, as long with also providing gap training so that you are just immediately a, a addressing these issues because if you let them go on you know what's going to happen next wednesday they're going to be late too and then you're just going to be frustrated the customers are going to be upset because they're late you know there's a chain reaction that happens when these gaps appear if you do not address them so and then it becomes a pattern and then you're just mad at yourself <laughs> nobody's wow. happy at that point you know exactly yeah exactly. so uh but it's worked really well and uh, keeping that log. And then I've also now um, started to keep a digital log as well um, within uh, the system that we use for our human resources with Bamboo HR as a notes tab. So uh, now every time I have one of these gap meetings, I not only have to depend on this physical paper that I have my, my gap meeting on, yeah. but there's now a digital record of this conversation. So anytime mm -hmm. that employee can go in there and see like that they've had these, these gap conversations. Wow. That is really cool. So you're really taking it to the next level, it's taking the instruction we had and kind of took, took some ownership and made it made it your own. I love that. Yeah. You know, like if I, if I can take something further, I'm going to, Joe, you know, let's, <laughs> let's squeeze more That's out of it. That's <laughs> it. That's what it's here for. It's here to yeah. just as a platform and you're here, you're launching off that platform. Well, Nicole, I can tell you one thing. Uh, there's nobody I've ever met quite like you before. So definitely you're unique. Uh, wh where do they find people like you? How, how do they find the, you as the right person? Did you, uh, so did you I actually out in Southern found Cal? Do it right. work out? I found it right. I came actually from Home Depot. Uh, I was a manager at Home Depot and I said, you know what? Uh, I'm looking for something that's a little bit better as far as my, uh, my time with my family. And, uh, you know, I've got all these management skills and I, and I'm able to, to help people and I love helping people. So let me, send my uh, net out there and see what I've gotten. I was very lucky to come across the amazing company, Do It Right, and fantastic owners here. Um, I couldn't be happier. It's it's brought me so much joy. Um, and I've learned so much too through it too, which is something that satisfies my, my thirst for knowledge as well. Well, definitely the uh, spirit of service, uh, the joy you have in your job and your work, and just trying to help other people definitely radiates uh, through that smile, that amazing smile you've got there. Oh, Nicole. thank you, Joe. Definitely, You're too kind. Definitely, you can't say Nicole without smiling. You know that. Right? <laughs> Appreciate I'm it. I'm just teasing. But anyway, <laughs> Nicole, thank you for being here on the show. Any any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Uh, no, just uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, really appreciate everything that you've been able to teach me and my team. Um, it truly helps us in our day-to-day -day encounters with customers. Nicole, thank you so much. We'll see you, see you around in the future. You got it, sir. Thanks.